episode of Wrecked. A ring runs off the road and ruins Rush Hour. Time to read the damn sign. Javier has got to set things straight. Stop. I got a wreck. You can't get there. Get out of the way. Joey's on the prowl for a big wreck. I know it's on. The truck radio works. O'Hare's inches away from disaster as they clean the biohazard in the middle of a big stop. Every minute that we're out there, we run the risk of somebody causing accidents behind us. And O'Hare has called up to Lake Michigan for a rather unusual mission. Well, this is water here. I want to get closer to dry. We are on a pier, and I am worried that the truck is going to crack the seawall, and I'm going to lose my million-dollar truck. Chicago has more than 20,000 miles of highway full of breakdowns, spills, and wrecks. It's a dangerous mess, and somebody's got to clean it up. Bill runs O'Hare towing with his wife, Marcy, his brother, Joey, a fleet of high-tech trucks, and a team of dedicated drivers who risk their lives every day, ready to respond at a moment's notice to the next big wreck. It's 5 a.m. on a Monday morning, and O'Hare is already hard at work. Our dispatch centers run 24-7, 365 days a year. At least two people here at all times to handle the calls and the call volume. Drivers like Jameson are already out there helping customers. There's no successful towing business that is a 9-to-5 operation. We don't get to predict when our next major incident's going to happen. We just have to respond and get it done. North Frontage Road, field 7, North Frontage Road. Operator Javier has just started his shift and is on his way to his first wreck of the morning. Ah, we're here. A truck driver made a mistake trying to turn around, and now traffic's backed up. Time to read the damn sign. Tempers are flaring, and the pressure's on Javier to get this mess cleaned up quick. I'm on my way to work, and um, I was held up because the truck driver can't read the signs that were posted. We're an hour behind now. Driving truck 307, an old O'Hare record, and the only one in the fleet that isn't green and white. Just making that little pathway. His truck is capable of doing this recovery, but Steve has been working since 7 p.m. last yeah, night, and Javier is concerned that he might be too tired. Can you handle it? I don't know. Tough job. All right. I want you pretty much here. Right here. Okay. Isn't the whole idea to pull them out that way? What? Isn't the whole idea to pull them towards the road? pick a swing. Steve and Javier have different ideas on how to execute this recovery. Steve wants to do a straight winch out, while Javier thinks a pick and swing would work best. After being out all night, Steve is in no mood to argue. Whatever you say. I'm a game player. There's a hundred different ways of doing this. Just gotta pick the best route. Javier's plan is to attach chains to the trailer and use the heavy duty wheel to lift the rear and swing it back onto the road. Pick it, swing it out of the way, get him out, get this driver on his way. And it better work or else he's going to be dealing with angry motorists, an upset truck driver, and worst of all, he'll have to admit to Steve that he was wrong. Hey, hold on. Whoa, he's off. With the chains in position, they begin Javier's pick and swing. Hey, boom in. Chains are slipping on the trailer's frame. If they fail, Javier is gonna have an even bigger mess on his hands. Right cable down. Stop. Right cable down. The pick and swing works. 
Now they can get the truck over to the side of the road and traffic can start moving again. Javier may be finished with this call, but there's no time to rest. There we go. Mondays are busy at O'Hare, and by 7 a.m., flight duty operator Mike is finishing up an accident on a major highway. Chris is dealing with a truck whose transmission is literally falling out. And back at the shop, Trike helps unload two wrecked cars and then heads back out for another call. That's typical Monday morning. The day is just getting started. Coming up, Dwight arrives to help out a stranded tow truck. A lot of people say, huh, tow truck towing another tow truck. It happens. And later, Joey heads out to Lake Michigan. I'm not sure what other people would come out here and do this. And then they call the big bad green guys. I don't think there's ever a time to where I don't want a truck wreck. I always want them. I need them. 10-8-10-8, Joe, 9-0-3. Need you to head over to North and Railroad, North and Railroad for a heavy-duty winch out. Everybody get off on Tui. Let me by. It's Joey's first call of the day. He thinks he's already hit the jackpot. <laughs> when the call comes in, some days it's a heart attack, some days it's about time. Typical tractor trailer rolled over. If it's a dump truck, it's gonna be right around seven to eight thousand dollars. So it, it's enough for me to get get out of the shop and go try to handle it. Lake Cook Road, one mile. I'll be jumping onto 94 in a little bit, taking that right to 171 and heading west. 903 Joe, disregard your call. Disregard 903. Stand down. Come on back to base. False call, fellas. That sucks. I get, I, I'm bummed, but this one, you, you gotta, you gotta think it might happen being so effing far away. When you don't get a call, it's like getting screwed without a kiss. There's no final, like, uh, right at the end. While Joey heads back to the shop. <laughs> Driver Dwight Lee continues his busy day. It started at 7.30. Good morning, Miss Carey. No. So far, he's already had to tow a bus, hook it to a cell, and jumpstart a truck at a loading dock. Okay, kilos headlights. We can just you know. It's now mid morning, and he's called out to tow yet another truck. But it's not just any truck; it's another tow truck. What's up, buddy? On the way here, I was on 355. Start overheating. Beeping, so I'm like, okay, pull over, to... let it cool down, and I called you guys. Oh, the whole horse dying on you, huh? <laughs> when a tow truck breaks down and needs a lift, it can be a blow to the driver's ego. When my unit's breakdown, I take it as personal offense to get raging, just very upset. Tow trucks. Nobody wants to see their tow truck get towed. I don't want to see my tow trucks in the shop, but trucks break down. I just wish it wasn't green and white ones. One time when my truck broke down, I was really embarrassed because we supposed to be the best and we strive to be the best and my truck died out in the middle of the road. One time Mike had to get dragged in and there was only one truck that did. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> and you were hooked up to a tractor trailer and I hooked up to your front and I towed <laughs> all three of them doing about 10 miles per hour. But just because they might be towing a tow truck, it doesn't mean the job is any different. All of the drive shafts and axles and releasing brakes and putting the lights on it, that's all the same. Whether it's a tow truck or any other kind of truck or a car, all, this, all the same procedures follow in place. Can't leave the tool. A lot of people say, huh, a tow truck towing another tow truck, it happens. What can you do when your truck break down, but get it back to the shop and get it repaired? Coming up. Do you know about that twin turbo Fiat? Joey's quest to find a big wreck continues. This one's about 
45 minutes away, and sometimes the police don't want to wait that long. We're on a timetable. We've got minutes to get this road open again. Bill and Trike deal with a biohazard on the side of a busy highway. It obviously punctured the oil pan and the radiator. Joey is still looking for his first heavy-duty recovery of the day. When a call comes in from dispatch. Five area. Uh, we got another wreck. Up at District 5. Might be rolled over. This one's for real. I know it's on! I know it's on! The truck radio works! Joey's been looking for a good recovery all day. This could be the one he's been waiting on. Do you know about that twin turbo Fiat? This one's about 45 minutes away. Sometimes the police don't want to wait that long. Traffic is effing awesome. It is bumper to bumper. We're doing freaking 15 miles per hour, and I got a truck on its side. I got a wreck. I can't get there. If you want to get there, there's people in the way. Get out of the way. Race against time right now. Times are I me. Mean, you can feel it. Oh, not feeling this. There you go, Roger. going on the scene. Roger's going to on the scene. Maybe we got canceled. Hey, that, that's all I can say at my professional time of this day. Right now. While Joey is still trying to recover from yet another false alarm, Trike is dispatched to the scene of an accident. 310 Trike, head over to 290 westbound, 290 westbound in St. Charles, District, Chicago. Out on I-290, a semi rear-ended another truck, and now it's blocking the right-hand lane. Gotta do the engine's out off of the tanker. The cops have given O'Hare just 20 minutes to clean this wreck up. Trike arrives at the scene and joins a team of O'Hare operators already at work. Right now we're on a timetable. We've got minutes to get this road open again. The other truck was drivable and pulled up on the shoulder ahead, but this semi is in bad shape. The engine and the transmission are shoved all the way back. It broke the motor mounts, and it's actually snapped the transmission off from the motor. It obviously punctured the oil pan and the radiator, so we have oil and uh, radiator fluid running down the highway. It is a biohazard. The fluids that are in a truck could turn into a hazardous material situation if there's enough of them leaked. And to make matters worse, the crew is working just inches from passing traffic. One distracted driver could easily cause a tragedy. We had one lane blocked. We had the shoulder blocked. Every minute that we're out there and we're on the side of the road, we run the risk of us getting hurt and potentially somebody behind us causing accidents behind us. Bill shows up to help move things along. We're worried about everything else. All I want you to do right now is get this ready to tow. Everything else is me. I'm going to clear the road. Got it. With Trike putting the finishing touches on hooking up a semi, Bill brings in backup to help clean up the massive spill. The crew has less than 10 minutes to get the lane reopened. Finally, Trike hauls the tanker off to the side so the rubberneckers have less to look at. Once I left the scene, traffic was able to flow a little smoother because they don't have people to stand there and to look and stare and say, oh my gosh, what is that? The O'Hare crew quickly finishes the cleanup and leaves the scene with just minutes to spare. An afternoon rainstorm sends Joey back out on the road. Come on. Go. this guy. There's a truck over, turned over at 290 in New York. We're gonna go see if we can't help out Elmhurst Fire Department. Elmhurst Police Department. Oh, this ain't gonna fly. Come on, come on, get out of the way. 
the tractor trailer on the side. 903, go ahead. Why would this be state? This should be on first. Man, I sure hope this ain't a false call or we get kicked off. That'll just be the icing on the cake. Why is it? When Joey arrives, O'Hare driver Dwight Lee is already on the scene with truck 607. But the state police aren't letting the O'Hare guys anywhere near the wreck. See the guy right there in the head with the coat on? Yeah, I talked to him. He said, get out of here. He said, we don't want you to we got somebody else. Okay. So, I mean, we want to see, see what you can do with the time. We'll talk to him for a second. Joey decides to go talk to the state trooper to see if he can't get this tow. After five minutes of heated discussion, Joey comes back empty-handed. What are you gonna say? The guy wouldn't even talk to me. He's just yelling like an animal. You know what? We're out here to help you. I get politics. Me and 607 could have easily uprighted that thing, at least gotten started on it, pulled it over into one lane. Never understand politics. On days where you have several false alarms in a row, it's kind of difficult. You get the one, and it's a false alarm, but you still got that adrenaline flowing. Another call comes in, and that cancels. You got like twice as much, you know, adrenaline rush in you, and uh, you start getting a little pissed off. You're expecting something, you know, a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, and if it's not there, you're like, what the hell? Joey has a hard time with that. He comes back to the shop and he's kicking garbage cans and MFing and he says, you know what, it's done. It's, it's, it's time to shift gears. Let's worry about the next problem. Because there's no guarantee that our phone's going to ring tomorrow. We're only as good as our last call. Coming up. Well, this is water here. I want to get closer to dry. Joey gets called out to Lake Michigan for a rather unusual task. Hey, come pick a mast off a boat. Sure as There's a boat there, half sunk. filled with false alarms. Joey Graziana is about to call it a day and head out on a date. But a call has just come into dispatch asking for the biggest truck in O'Hare's arsenal. It's not good at all. It's 6.45, my date's at 7. I'm screwed. Right now, there's a couple of things I'd rather be doing. One would probably be getting ready to go on a date. It's the nature of this beast. Goes all, goes all, you know, you sit around all day waiting for something to happen, and then all of a sudden, nothing does, and you get ready to go, and then you run your ass off. It's been that way for uh, 20 plus years. As of right now, Joe's life just stopped. They're kicking into overdrive. Joey and Steve Milan head to a marina on Lake Michigan, expecting to tow a vehicle on dry land. But when they arrive, the recovery isn't what they expected. Which one do you want? You want water? Hey, come pick a mast off a boat. Sure as <laughs> There's a boat there, half sunk. Well, yesterday the boat sunk, and we came down this morning. We put divers down, raised the boat with airbags, and then pumped it out. It's still taking on water, and we're going to tow it up the river to a, a boat yard. We have to take the mast down because the bridges won't go up for us at this time of the night. Before Joey and Steve can even think about accomplishing this unusual tow, they have to get the truck onto the narrow seawall. We're going to brush against this. Okay. Eat the grass. Just a little bit right here, and we'll watch your front front end around with that tree. We're gonna stick right next to these chairs, and we're gonna go right down the seawall. Agreed? Agreed. All right. Maneuvering the 30-ton wrecker down a winding pathway in the dark is a two-man job. Steve drives while Joey guides him. Nice and easy. Watch yourself, watch yourself. Steve strays from the path. He risks smashing into trees and park benches. Let's get it over there. There you go. Keep coming. Let's pull forward. Or worse, ending up at the bottom of Lake Michigan. I want to get you over to the left as far as possible. This is water here. I want to get closer to dry. 
There's no posted weight limit, so Joey has to hope that the concrete path can endure the strain of the 67,000 pound record. We are on a pier, and I am worried that the truck is going to crack the seawall, and I'm going to lose my million dollar truck. And I don't even know, I'd probably move to Canada if I did. Hey, Bill, guess what? You know where the truck's at? In the bottom of the lake. Have a nice life. Never coming back to Chicago. <laughs> PTO, leave your headlights off. Joey gets his boom into position and gets ready to yank the mast out. You lower your hook down and we'll attach it right here and go right up. Okay. Which one do you want? You want white or green? Which one's your lucky color? Have to green. use that. Have to use the green. All right. Going up. The 200 pound mast is no match for the rotating boom and they quickly pull it out of its base. <laughs> nice. Is that it? That is it. <laughs> you don't want the boat out of the water? <laughs> we can do it. I'll figure something out. That was different. <laughs> Anytime you need anything like this, give us a call. Oh, yeah. All right, let's uh, fold it up. Uh, it was a fairly delicate piece of work for the uh, boom operator on the tow truck. It's not very heavy. However, a regular tow truck probably couldn't have been able to do that because of the reach necessary. A, a smaller tow truck might have wound up on top of the boat in the water. My date was a bust. Instead of a date with a pretty good looking lady, I went out on a date with the mistress. I'll take that any day of the week. I, I, I'm not sure what other people would come out here and do this. And then they called the big bad green guys, and we came out here and handled the problem for them. We've winched boats out of docks. We've winched boats that hit land. Never pulled a mast off one. I mean, that's, I say that's pretty good for my repertoire. <laughs> There's not a better centralized towing and recovery machine anywhere except O'Hare. And just because of some bull politics, these guys are coming from 40 miles away. Could have had it cleared from the road, maybe into one lane by now. Oh, who gives a f could have had forklifts and shit out there by now. What's this guy doing? I thought he was going the wrong way. 